Hello and welcome back to another video on my uh, channel. Today I will be looking at the uh, despots of Epirus. Uh, and this is a very interesting point in history uh, for Byzantium. Uh, in fact, it was a point in history where Byzantium uh, ceased to exist. But in its footsteps, uh, three powerful entities emerged from the ashes. Uh, those were the empires of Trebizond, uh, shown here, that controlled the cities of Sinope and Trebizond, um, on the Black Sea coast, uh, and the Empire of Nicaea, which um, basically came to um, restore the Byzantine Emperor, uh, Empire. Rather. Um, however, in the east of Greece, okay, uh, around the Ionian Islands, uh, the despotate of Epirus stood supreme, um, and I will be talking about them today. Um, and in fact, fun fact, <laughs> The despot of Epirus uh, and the emperor of Trebizond actually outlived uh, the proper Byzantine uh, Empire by quite some years. Uh, so uh, Leonardo III, who was despot of Epirus, uh, ruled until um, 1479 properly. Um, he would go on to claim uh, the throne of Epirus uh, long after it had been conquered by the Ottomans, but uh, he actually uh, ruled for longer than Constantine uh, the 11th, uh, so that's an interesting fact. However, uh, we're jumping ahead of ourselves, so we have to uh, go back a bit. Um, so, to understand why the Byzantine Empire ceased to exist um, in the early 1200s, we have to look at the Fourth Crusade. Uh, so, this was a crusade uh, called on by uh, the Pope Innocent III. Uh, I made a chart on him. He was um, a relative of the very famous, or infamous rather, House of Tusculum, um, and he called the Fourth Crusade. Now, the Crusaders actually didn't go to the Holy Land. Instead, they uh, decided it would be better if they went to the very wealthy city of Constantinople, that was the capital of the Byzantine Empire. And various members of the Byzantine royal family uh, promised the Crusaders bribes uh, and payouts if the Crusaders helped them uh, get various members of their own families onto the Byzantine throne. Okay, uh, but after the Crusaders helped um, some of these Byzantine um, family members of emperors um, out, um, they didn't get any gold for it. Okay, um, so naturally, when there is a very very large army. Of angry and fed up crusaders inside the city walls uh, they are going to sack your city and that's exactly what happened uh, to Constantinople unfortunately uh, in fact the uh, sack of Constantinople was led by the Venetians and the Venetians uh, took uh, four horses uh, from Constantinople and uh, put them in St Mark's uh, Basilica um, in uh, Venice, St. Mark's Cathedral, sorry. Um, okay, um, so after that, um, Epirus, Trebizond, and Nicaea succeeded the Byzantine Empire. And um, like I say, the Byzantine Empire did eventually re emerge about 50 years later. Um, but um, I'll basically be talking about uh, Epirus. Okay. So Michael I was the first despot of Epirus. Um, he allied himself with Boniface of Montferrat, who was the ruler of Thessalonica, um, and he was a crusader. Okay, He then converted to Catholicism because the ecumenical patriarch of Constantinople had basically denounced Michael and claimed that he was illegitimate. Uh, so in retaliation, Michael converted to Catholicism. Um, quite ironically, might I add, because, of course, if it wasn't for uh, the Pope and the Catholics, um, his empire, or his family's empire, would still be around. Um, in fact, he swore fealty to the same Pope who declared the, uh, the Fourth Crusade, um, Innocent III. Okay. He then attacked uh, Boniface of Montferrat after swearing fealty uh, to the Latin Emperor Henry of Flanders, and for this, Michael had himself excommunicated. Okay, he was then killed in, uh, he, sorry, he was then murdered by his brother, uh, Theodore, okay? And Theodore uh, came to rule uh, Epirus. If I haven't mentioned it already, 
um, they Michael and Theodore didn't use the term despot, and they would have known themselves simply as ruler of Epirus. Um, but for the sake of consistency, uh, I've labelled them as despots, but just be aware of that. Okay, um, so Theodore attacked Thessalonica um, and the Bulgars, uh, the Bulgarians. Uh, he then executed uh, the Latin Emperor Peter of Courtenay, um, which was quite a controversial move. Um, and then he tried to um, basically declare war on the Empire of Nicaea because the Emperor John III had uh, marched on Adrianople, Okay, and he had conquered it. And Adrianople was one of the most important cities in the entire Byzantine Empire. And Theodore over here uh, rather wanted it. Okay, so uh, they got into a conflict. Um, but John III, who had a far larger army, won uh, and had Theodore blinded. Okay. Um, Theodore's brother Manuel uh, became the king of Thessalonica. Okay. Um, Meanwhile, Michael I's bastard son, Michael II, became the despot of Epirus. Okay, now after that, um, Thessalonica basically uh, crumbled um, under um, Manuel, who was Theodore's uh, brother's son, uh, Demetrios. So Demetrios was Theodore's um, nephew, if that wasn't clear. Um, so in return for Michael II recognising John III as the legitimate Byzantine Emperor. John III recognised Michael II as the despot of Epirus. So Michael II was the first person to use that title. Um, he married his daughter Anna to William II of Achaia. Achaia was again um, a successor state, uh, or rather a crusader state. It, they were um, Western European, obviously. I think they were French. Um, but he allied himself with the uh, the Crusader states. Okay, uh, so then Theodore, who was still around, uh, he was still alive, actually managed to get Dyrrhachium from a deal um, with the Byzantine Emperor, um, which obviously really annoyed Michael uh, II. So him, um, Manuel, who was Theodore's brother, and William II of Achaia attacked um, this emperor here. Michael the Eighth, okay, uh, and I know there's some distance in this chart, but just be aware that these two people were in fact contemporaries, okay, even though it looks like they're of different generations. Uh, however, Michael the Eighth um, managed to defeat uh, this combined force of um, Greek armies, and he um, himself became the Byzantine Emperor, okay. Okay, so um, meanwhile. Michael was attacked by King Manfred of Sicily, okay, and William, um, William of Achaia was then captured, um, at the Battle of Pelagoria. Sorry, it's quite a, a hard word to pronounce. Uh, and then Michael, like I say, um, declared himself the Byzantine Emperor, and he is widely believed to be the Byzantine Emperor. Okay. Um. After this humiliating defeat, uh, where Michael lost Corfu, uh, which is an Ionian island to the Sicilians, um, as well as Dyrrhachium to the Byzantines, uh, he was forced to marry his son, uh, Nikephoros, to Maria. Okay. Um, so then Epirus was vassalised. Charles of Anjou, who was the king of Sicily, and he was actually a member of the French royal family, uh, captured Dyrrhachium after that, um, and then Nick Foros, who was a new despot, um, his father had died since, um, Nick Foros lost Albania um, to the Byzantines again. Um, so Nick Foros then allied himself to Charles of uh, Anjou's uh, son, who was Charles II, um, and defeated the Byzantines. Um, in fact, Charles II. Uh, if it wasn't clear, he was the king of Sicily. Uh, he was also the Count of Anjou, and um, he held various other um, provinces. In fact, his descendants would go on to found the House of Anjou-Durazzo, um, and 
those um, people, uh, I believe, were related to the Hungarian royal family. Uh, so that's an interesting link there. Okay. Um, so then, um, Nikephoros uh, died and was succeeded by his son, uh, Thomas. Now, it's rumoured that uh, Nikephoros' uh, wife um, had him murdered and then ruled um, sort of as the uh, puppeteer uh, over Thomas, okay? Uh, there was a lot of court intrigue, that's why I find this topic so fascinating. Um, so, Anna, um, who was Thomas's um, mother, that's actually wrong. Um, he, he did marry Maria, but he also married a different woman called Anna. Um, so, Anna ruled over Thomas. Um, then, she revolted against the Latin Empire, um, but had to cede um, some more... Um, territory to them because he uh, she basically lost okay and then that meant that Thomas her son uh, gained more autonomy uh, because his mother was weakened uh, Thomas was murdered by his nephew okay Nicholas now Nicholas was from the powerful Orsini family and I'll talk about them just for a minute um, their father John and his relatives and, this, uh, and ancestors were the Counts of Kefalonia, um, which was a very big Ionian island, okay? So they were very important nobles under Epirus, okay? The uh, the Orsini family were actually Italian, um, and they had three to five popes, depending on who you ask. Um, sorry, just reading some notes. Yeah, so um, I have actually made a family tree on the Orsini, um, and they're extremely interesting. Um, they are a very ancient house. They go back to the year uh, 700 uh, or so uh, with the Boboni or Sinis. Um, so that's where it's controversial whether or not they had uh, three or five popes. Um, but they are very interesting, okay? And this is um, a point where some family members have basically migrated to Greece and Nicholas um, then became the despot, so his family married in uh, to this family. Okay, so these are now the Orsini despots of Epirus. Um, Nicholas um, basically tried to claim for himself all of Greece, um, but that didn't really work out for him. And then he was um, supposedly uh, murdered by John II, his brother. Uh, then John uh, ruled... Uh, in 1323. Um, John was then poisoned by his wife, okay, and she uh, put his son on the throne, so Nicephorus II. And uh, Nicephorus II is very interesting, uh, as you'll see in a minute. Um, so Andronicus III, um, who was the Byzantine emperor at the time, um, who is over here, this guy, um, he invaded with a a Turkish army uh, with the Turks of course they were Muslims so that's um, a bit dubious really on uh, Andronicus's behalf um, and he invaded with the Turks about 2000 and they uh, vassalized Epirus uh, for a second time. Nicephorus II was then engaged to the daughter of this emperor here John Cantacuzenus I think that says a bit of it's hidden it's a very long Greek word there uh, that's a Latinized uh, version. Um, he basically married, or sorry, be was betrothed to that man's daughter, okay? Um, so after that, um, basically Nikephoros uh, fled. He was uh, very weak, very scared, so he fled to Italy, okay? Uh, he was then uh, reinstated. Um, he was actually... Um, besieged in the castle for many years, uh, but then he was um, persuaded to give it up and he was remade the despot of Epirus in 1356. Um, he was also named Pan He Per Sebastos, uh, which again, very long Greek word. Uh, it's basically like a member of the uh, imperial Byzantine family. So, yeah, in the end, Nikephorus was successful, you know, he was respected. Um, Epirus then um, took uh, advantage of a civil war 
um, and then the um, the emperor of the Serbians, who was called um, Tsar Stefan uh, Dushan, I believe. It's sort of an S with a V on top of it, uh, so I don't know how that's pronounced. So I think it's Dushan. Uh, made his brother Simeon as the despot of Epirus. Okay. Um, so then Nikephoros basically. Um, sorry, not this Nikephoros, a different Nikephoros. Uh, he used Dushan's death um, in um, 1355 to uh, take Epirus back. Oh, sorry, no, that is the same uh, uh, Nikephoros. My bad, my notes aren't that clear. Um, so then um, Nikephoros actually died three years later in battle. Um, but he did conquer uh, Thessaly. Um, Thessaly is... Um, on the other side of the uh, Greek peninsula. Um, so again, you know, very important guy, Nikephoros II, very interesting. Um, so a few years later, Simeon then um, became the uh, the emperor of the Serbs and um, again reinstated himself as the despot of Epirus. Um, so through this last bit of um, Nikephoros' reign, uh, he was sort of... Um, a vassal to the Serbs, and Simeon uh, was his governor, uh, but then Simeon became the despot outright. Okay, um, so Simeon took over, um, and then his son in law uh, took over, Thomas II, uh, but he then died. So his wife, um, Maria, uh, who is the only female despot of Epirus, uh, so her title was Basilissa, um, then remarried a, uh, an Italian man. A Florentine called Esau, okay. Uh, so then, um, under Esau, uh, she transferred Ionia uh, to the uh, Italian family uh, that was called Tocco, okay. More on them in a minute. Um, so she transferred the Ionian islands to uh, the Tocco family, um, and then she uh, was captured. Oh, sorry, Esau was captured by. Albanian uh, rebels who released him for a crippling amount of money, uh, so much so that Epirus was weakened for uh, many years to come. Uh, this allowed the Toko family, uh, who I mentioned previously, um, and they are here, uh, so it's this family here, uh, they were basically able to seize Epirus um, and then they asserted dominance uh, over that region. Uh, so the first death despot was Carlo, and then he was succeeded by his nephew Carlo II, and then finally Leonardo III. These guys were all Italians, um, and they ruled lands in Italy as well. Okay, uh, however, unfortunately after this, Ionia, the Ionian Isles were uh, captured in 1430. Arta, which was the capital of Epirus, was conquered in uh, 1449, uh, and then finally um, Orostia, I think that says, Orostia, uh, was uh, captured in 1479, uh, and that marks the end of the despotism of Epirus. Uh, there were despots to come, um, who were descendants of Leonardo III, but obviously they were only de despots in name, okay? Um, so yeah, there's a look at the despots of Epirus, I hope you enjoyed this video, uh, I put a lot of research into it, uh, even though my notes um, aren't that good. Um, my handwriting is not particularly good. Um, but yeah, I hope that I can uh, make more videos. Um, of course, I've not made any videos in the last three weeks now, um, and I hope to amend that. Um, basically, it's been because my chart has been playing up, um, it's crashing a lot, and also I've been back to school. Uh, so hopefully I'll get that working. Alright, thank you very much. See you later. Bye.